You're welcome back from the break. Today we will be interviewing a lawyer um, on DNA testing and the law. Ghana's, there have been many instances throughout history where notable discoveries have been made about DNA and inheritance. These have formed the foundations of what we know and continue to advance today. Esi Benoa Otu explores the history and uses of DNA in Ghana. The history of DNA started as early as 5000 BC when humans began the practice of selective breeding to produce more robust crops and livestock. Greek philosophers explored the idea of human inheritance some 1,600 years after 5000 BC. The notable Aristotle suggested that traits acquired throughout an organism's lifetime could be transmitted to their offspring. DNA is a molecular composed of two chains that coil around each other to form a double helix carrying genetic instructions for the development, functioning, growth and reproduction of all known organisms and many viruses. Chief biomedical scientist at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital, Augustine Sego, is one of the brains behind DNA testing in Ghana. In Ghana, initially, I did a feasibility study. I went to 28 courts. So I went far to search for information as to where and when did they request for this crucial test. Upon this study, I came out with the fact that there were a lot Mm, columns, columns of cases that are pending in the court for the DNA, paternity. Ghana until recently took samples for DNA testing to Europe and South Africa. These usually were to determine one's paternity, but that's not all about DNA. We use DNA for testing viruses. We use DNA for testing diseases that are inherited. We use DNA for so many, many things. And one of them is for paternity because of its unique information that it brings about to each and every individual or every organism on Earth. Augustine Sego has done a number of different DNA tests, so I asked whether a DNA could be done on the skulls found in the septic tank purported to be those of a Takra the missing girls. Yes, DNA can be done even when the, the case is more than seven years. Yes, because in a scalp, with the tooth on the mandible, okay, there's a nerve connecting the tooth to the scalp, okay, and these are cells. I think they are the last thing that they destroy. But he says people sometimes have their preconceived results and may want to reject results when it does not favor them. To the family, to the family, yes, they will have their own preconceived results that they are expecting. We call it um, result expectations. See, but the truth is truth. The fact is fact. If the scalp is worked on, whatever comes out will be that fact. Okay, so it's all about deoxyribonucleic acid DNA. And we want to understand how the law plays in that today on Chamber. This is what we are discussing and breaking it down for every single person to understand. We have on our phone lines, Lawyer Bernard Oredu. Hello, Lawyer Bernard Oredu. Are you, how are you doing? Uh, hello, I'm doing great. And yourself? 
Very well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. I understand thank that there. Thank you for having me, and good morning to your viewers. Awesome. I understand that there are different types of DNA testing. Could you kindly help us um, identify those, just uh, as a base for our viewers to understand? Well, uh, um, for for the purposes of um, what usually pertains in the culture, and uh, specifically to identify who a father of a child is. You know, basically, uh, because mothers do carry babies, identifying who a mother is isn't a problem. But sometimes it becomes an issue as to who, who is the father mm. of the child. Mm. That is the main issue. So the, the ones that come up in court proceedings mm -hmm. are usually basically for, for determining who a father is mm. to determine paternity. But mm -hmm. there have been situations where some diseases have been passed on to people and um, they would want compensation for probably uh, diseases of, mm. of, 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 of uh, diseases found in their children that they suspect that it came as a result of this particular man sleeping okay. with them and all that. Mm. So when that happened in court, we could also ask that DNA uh, uh, analysis be done to ascertain who the, the originator of this disease is. But basically, what results in our court are the analysis to determine paternity. Okay. So should, should people be allowed to choose whether or not they want to um, take a DNA test or should it be mandatory? Well, um, when it happens in court, I mean, if there's a dispute as to who a father is and if in the wisdom of the court, the best way is to order that a DNA analysis be done, then it becomes a court order. It becomes okay. imperative. So when it becomes a court order, it is binding on the parties that the order is directed at. So if, 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 if a court finds wisdom in action that uh, a DNA as, as analysis is done to establish paternity, it becomes a court order and it is binding on whoever the order is directed at. Okay. When that happens, you have no choice but to go with the orders of the court. And if they refuse to do so, what, what, what happens to the person? Or if you refuse, and just like, I mean, disregarding and disobeying any other of courts. I mean, you could be, you could be uh, found contemptuous of mm. courts for refusing to go by the orders of the court. And other remedies that are available uh, for the, uh, against the offending party. Definitely okay. once the court order, there are processes of court to ensure that it is adhered to. Okay. Um, I'd like us to take a, a case right now. Should a father uh, take his son or to take his child for a DNA test and um, this is without the consent of his wife or the woman in his life, the mother of the child, um, would you say that that is legal? Um, DNA testing, um, I could say as a matter as of right. I mean, if I have my child and I'd want to ascertain that indeed this child is mine, I don't think I need the um, mother's consent. Okay. And take the child to identify and to DNA analysis if I'm his true father. I mean, um, out of courtesy, probably you could inform the mom that this is what you want to do. And you know, it has, it has its moral and psychological issues. So okay. probably you would want, because of, you don't want to have anything surprising the other party, mm. you would want to inform the mother. But if you have your son, if you have your child, and you would want to have a DNA testing to analyze the DNA to ascertain whether you are the father, there is no requirement by law to inform the mother or to inform any other relative. Once mm -hmm. the person is your child, you're entitled to ask. Because, you see, mm -hmm. the whole idea is to determine fatherhood. Mm -hmm. And if you have any doubts, I mean, uh, it is best that such lingering doubts are settled. And it helps even in the, in, 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 in the keeping of the child, in the upkeep of the child. So you, you wouldn't infringe anybody's right if... Mm -hmm your own child, you take the person for DNA analysis, no. Okay, so in a case where um, a man finds out that um, his, his child, or one that he's called his child um, for a very long time is not his biological child, um, does he have the right to sue? Um, when you find out, it's, it's the seat in the highest order, because um, we, we've seen instances where it has become the basis for uh, dissolution of marriages. Okay. Well, probably then the father or the other partner believes that you were not faithful to him during uh, the courtship, or probably when you were in, in, in when you were having when when you were married. 
So it's, it's, it's a basis for dissolution of marriage. Okay. And at, at some extreme cases, I mean, the men have asked that they are compensated by the women for the uh, psychological discomfort, the embarrassment, and all those things that they have suffered. I mean, as for uh, uh, taking care of the children, at the time you were doing it, you were presumed to be the father of the children. Mm. So you may not have any remedies against the children or probably investing in the children or asking for re recovery of whatever amount you have invested in mm. the children. But you can ask for compensation against the woman for the deceit, for the psychological trauma, for okay. the emotional stress you have gone through or because that you found out later in life that the kids that you have fathered along, all along your life are not your biological children. Mm. That you can do because mm. uh, it's, it's, it's sort of um, has, has, has a mental thing with it and any court would be able to grant you some compensation based on these emotional traumas and psychological disadvantages you have gone through okay. against the woman. Okay, okay. So, so again, if he decides that he wants to keep the children as his, um, is, is that possible with the courts? Would they grant him rights? I, could you come again? I didn't get that. Um, if, um, if he decides that he wants to keep the children as his, would he, can he be given the rights to keep them as his? You want to sue the children? No, if um, he, he decides, he finds out that the children are not biologically his, but he still wants to keep them as his. Can he have the oh, rights yeah, with the yeah, court yeah, granting yeah. the rights? Usually, rights? usually I have done a case where the man actually found out that the kids, two of them, are not his. Mm. But because of the bondage, because of the love, and these were kids who were 11 and 13 years. I mm. mean, for 13 years, he stayed with them. He asked that he's been given, uh, the court gives him access to the children. Mm. And the court considered that looking at the bonding, looking at the love all these years, that is proper, even though the court has found out that they are not his biological children. But the court made orders that mm. because of the, 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 the love between the father and the children, mm -hmm. they should have reasonable access to the kids. So you can base on the fact that uh, it will help you psychologically, even though now you are aware that the children are not your biological children, but you would want to have the association, you want to have that bondage continue. The, I have seen the court grant such orders that even though uh, it has been found that the man is not the biological father of the children, he should have reasonable access to the children. Okay. It, is, it is something which can be done once the person, uh, the father mm. deems that, oh, he would want to act. I have mm. seen it granted by the court. Okay, that's, that's great. So, um, final word, general advice to um, anyone out there who's, you know, a man, woman in a relationship, general advice concerning DNA testing. Well, for me, I think it comes with um, psychological and emotional issues. So if you would want to go through this, then you should be ready that you could have the surprises. So make sure you are ready psychologically, make sure you are ready emotionally before you undertake to do this DNA analysis. Okay. And some too, it comes as a big surprise to them. Usually when you are traveling outside the country, I mean, those who get, uh, there, there, there were situations where the man only found out because he had won this Ameri uh, uh, lottery, American lottery, and he was ready to take the children outside with him and he had to go through this process and he found out that they are not his kids. So those ones, they just come off the curve. But yeah. if you just really want to go check it out and ascertain for yourself that your kids, they are, they, you are their biological father, make sure that psychologically and emotionally you are ready because the outcome could really have some serious consequences mm. psychologically. Psychologically. Yes. So be strong before you get yes, you need to be strong. tested. Yes. Um, thank you so much, um, Loyal Redu, for your time. Thank you for the advice as well.